one. Welcome back to the Upper Tier Podcast, the football podcast we bring you each and every day on YouTube. Head over there and smash that subscribe and bell notification button. We are back with the Champions League, back with an absolute belter. Some great results there tonight, unbelievable. But we are back and we said we'd get together and put together an all-time combined 11 Champions League team. Joining me tonight as always, the Dazzler. How are we, Dazzler? I'm all right, Noel. How are you, brother? You look like a guy who enjoyed that half-time experience at the Super Bowl. It was absolutely cracking. It's also, the best 40 minutes I've had in a long time, pal. That is unbelievable, wasn't it? If I'd have had a happy ending, it could have been the best 40 minutes I've had in my life. 45. <laughs> 45. 41 and a half. Happy days. Seconds. Seconds. <laughs> also joining us tonight, our resident referee, as he comes on on these combined 11 shows. Mark, how are we, Mark? How's it going, lads? Good, Thanks good. for having me on again. Good to see two United fans smiling again and a little bit happier, as we say. But anyway, let's get into this. Combined 11 for the Champions League. Don't know how you boys felt putting this together, but it's kind of a tough one. Big names have to get left out in this, don't they? Big we time. will be coming on next yeah. week as well, where we're going to do a combined 11 for the current campaign of the Champions League as well, which should be interesting as well. Um, Darren, kick us off. Goalkeeper and defence. Old keeper and defence. Well, a couple of, uh, couple of difficult, difficult decisions to be made here, Noel. Um, obviously, between the sticks, quite a few names that were floating about. Um, you know, Oliver Kahn didn't get a spot, unfortunately. Great goalkeeper, though. He was missed at Champions League for a couple of years. Peter Schmeichel, again, didn't get the, didn't get the, the nod, shall we say. Um, I've gone with Ika Casillas. I just thought ever present in that Real team, you know. Um, for for ten plus years, super super goalkeeper. He was captain. He was leader from the back. He was just excellent, you know. And when Real Madrid and Spain are both at their best, he was at the forefront of what they did for me, you know. So I've gone with Eager in goal. My back four, yeah. And um, little little mix in the centre back role here. So we've gone for one Barcelona and one Real Madrid. Not sure how the two lads will get on, but uh, again, we've seen them do it. We've seen them do it together. Uh, for Spain with you, as well. With you as manager, they'll do what they're told. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we've seen them do it together for Spain as well. You know, Sergio Ramos and Carlos Puyol, unbelievable. You know, they've won seven Champions League between them. Um, two super, super footballers. Uh, again, they they played a big part in front of Casillas in, in kind of, you know, putting the barricade up in front of them and, and trying to keep things as tight as possible. Um, I did obviously think about, you know, putting our friend Paolo Maldini in there at centre-back, but I decided when I look through things, Paolo, I'm going to shove you out to the left-hand side there because uh, I think at times he was very, very cultured for a centre-back and I think he was probably better with his ball with the ball at his feet than some of the other left-back options. So I've gone Maldini left-back and then at right-back I've gone for a little surprise. Um, I'm a big fan of this guy. Uh, he didn't play all of his football at right-back but he did play a portion of it for his club, Bayern Munich, and for Germany. So my right-back is one Philippe Lamb. So we've got Iga Casillas, Philip Lamb, Sergio Ramos, Carlos Puyol, and Paolo Maldini as my back five. Yeah, I was thinking when you mentioned Oliver Kahn there, and I was thinking of him today, and then I went, fuck you over 99. Fuck you, you're not getting in. <laughs> great show. Yeah, actually, Ramos and Puyol in the middle there make a great white collar boxing match, wouldn't it? Wouldn't Pun- it? Punch the head Absolutely. off each other. Killing each other. Two, two tough men. 100% absolutely Shehousery of and, the uh, highest order not a bad left back in there either as well he could look after himself as well not messing around and with and you've that got man. that German efficiency on the right hand side I have to tell you like I'm impressed with that I really yeah. am like good sprinkling there you covered all bases there good show Mark thank you keeper and defence well as you have mentioned them there a few times I've gone with Oliver Kahn um, because of just, 99 because of 99 <laughs> yeah and I was just thought what a keeper he was the amount of remember at 2002 World Cup he only conceded two goals in the whole tournament and that was in the final against Brazil he got a player of the tournament no but, that's wrong Mark because Robbie Keane scored against him in the group stages 
Oh yeah, Jesus, yeah. Well, my my Gilgan must have been working. But now he got player of the tournament. It was only two players scored against him at the that World Two Cup. players. That's what must have been what I read. One was Robbie. He got one, and the other one was Farrell. Remember, yeah, he, he got hit, two. Remember Noel Quinn with the flick on, and then the <laughs> <that. laughs> But uh, just he was an unbelievable keeper, and he was a looper as well. He was an absolute nut job. Um, so we've gone with him and goal. Um, just be, just before you move on, that Bowdy has been United men. At any stage, did you think Schmeichel was he in the running? Yeah, I have him on my bench. Not yeah. for me. No. Uh, purely purely for longevity reasons. You know, when Schmeichel left Man United, it's like falling off the edge of a fucking cliff, wasn't it? You know, yeah. you've gone from a European champion to sunning yourself on the beach in Lisbon. You're at Aston Villa. You're at Man City. Like, you've made a mockery of your career, really, pal. Like, you should have just gone back to Denmark, went back to Bromby and won a few league titles there and put your feet up. But he decided to go the long route about it. He, You couldn't put him in. Um... With, with what kind of quality that is there, you know what I mean? Like, can for me, didn't even make the bench. I've got Casillas in my team. I've got uh, somebody else on my bench. So Schmeichel would have been toward or far behind them, you know? Yeah, no, it was just interesting to hear. Go ahead, Mark, with your defence. Um, we've gone for four at the back. Uh, Roy Full, I've gone for Cafu. Uh, he's just unbelievable. Um, obviously, with Roma and Milan and stuff like that. Um, for the centre-half position, this is one I've been chopping and changing all day and up until about an hour ago. Um, but I've actually gone for Yap Stam. That's the other United player in the team. I just, oh man, he was a beast. I remember going over to seeing him at games, the size of his toys, his players used to, it was so hard to get by him. Um, and he was actually quick for the big lad. He was quick with, and he was good with the ball at his feet as well. So I've gone for him. I was, it was a toss up between him and Puyo, but I went for Stam in the end. And beside him, is the centre half that I used to love watching on a, a Sunday afternoon football Italia. Oh. It's a uh, Franco Franco Perezzi. I used to absolutely love watching him. I had a Milan jersey back in the day with his name on the back, so I have a bit of a soft spot for him. And at left full, I've gone for Paolo Maldini. Interesting, interesting. Pitch Very there. nice, Darren. Any Very thoughts? Nice. No, no. Um, I think listen, Yap's a great show. If I'm honest. Um, was it just a titan in that Champions League winning winning team for United um, in 99 um, you know obviously played played Champions League football then with Lazio and with AC Milan and did a really really solid job um, good good solid centre back for me I have to say I like um, obviously Maldini I've got on the left myself um, I can see what you're doing with Cafu as well you know he brings a lot of legs to the team doesn't he um, and, and creativity and stuff like that so yeah absolutely it's, it's pretty good for me I have to say good shout right I'll give you mine now <laughs> sure to create controversy don't even attempt to come back at me if Yaf Sam has a good shout don't attempt to come back at me <laughs> right so I went with Icta Casillas as well but I, I toyed between Manuel Neuer as well and Icta Casillas and a number of others but I, I, I felt I went with him and, and strangely enough, not your typical goalkeeper either as well. Wasn't wasn't the biggest chap in the world or the biggest no. build chap in the world as well, but certainly was unbelievable and an unbelievable shot, shot stopper as well. Uh, I went with 4 3 as my formation, by the way, just so you know. So with a back four, left back Roberto Carlos. Then I went with in the middle, uh, Maldini and Puyol. And then I went with Gary Neville at right back. Now, I can hear all my red Liverpool fans looking at me now going, why are you doing that? The reason I went with that is I went with because of consistency and performance of play. And he also, Mark, I don't know whether I'm correct on this or not, but he won two and was runner-up in two. Is that correct? He would have 90, 99-08. Uh, was he in the two, first and only game? I don't know, we said no. that to him earlier. Yeah. I, said that earlier. I, I know he was definitely game. a runner up in one, but I thought he might be a I think Raf I think Raf Wiel started in that game, didn't he? And he certainly started in the one where we played in the white jersey. Yeah, that's that's the one I think of uh, 2011, I think it was, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um I think me giving you a bit of hammer and tongs about you know the United Boys on the podcast, you've tried to appease me there. No, but I've gone with 
I haven't. I put him in there because I tell you now, I, I looked at it and I thought... You put him in because you went, I can't get one in the midfielder up front, so I can only try and no, get No, no, I wasn't, I, I wasn't trying to crowbar <laughs> one in because I actually have one on my bench as well, believe it or not. But I put him in there because I thought, like, he won in 99 and he won in our way, which is quite a gap, nine years, like. But I just think his level of performance in Europe over that period of time, I was saying to you today, Dazzler off camera as well, I think most games he was an eight, wasn't he? Most games he was an eight. He wore a size eight shoe. That was the only fucking thing he had with an eight man. He had joking. You don't think he? You don't think Jesus. his performance is on his level of performance? No, not for me, man. Well, like, I do. Listen, I do think between. Go ahead, Darren. I, I'm a United fan, so I'd love nothing more than to be able to go. Oh yeah, Gary Devil, but I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't like, even sit. I couldn't even bluff my way through that, like. Well, I put him in and I tried to bluff my way through it. So there you go. <laughs> Darren, what, what formation did you go with? I went with a four, a three and a three. Right, so give us your three midfielders then. Moments of controversy uh, won't be any more rife than this one right now, yeah? Um, my midfield three. At the base of my midfield, I've gone for one Andrea Pirlo. Okay. Yeah. Just what a footballer this guy was, um, like a red woman, seemed to get better with age. Just his control in the midfield, his eye for a pass, his touch, everything. He just oozed, you know, machismo, so to speak, on the on the field. I just loved the way every time he got the ball, I felt like something stopped in the game that he just seemed to create time for himself, which was amazing. So yeah, I've gone I watched him. Um, I watched him playing a legends game at Anfield, AC Milan versus Liverpool Legends. And yeah. the way his distribution even then was unbelievable. You could see yeah. half of these lads shouldn't have been even out on the pitch. Yeah. Cafu actually played in it, believe it or not. He had a good game, actually, nearly scored as well. But yeah, Pirlo, Pirlo pulling the strings in midfield because we Pirlo and Gerard, and they were both pulling the strings against each other, and it was absolutely brilliant to see. They hadn't lost a beat, like amazing. Top sure. Unbelievable. Um, Alongside or, or slightly in front of Pirlo, if we go with the old Ralph Rannick mess, I suppose Pirlo would be the six, and we'd have two boys ahead that will be the eights. Javi, one half of probably the best midfield in Champions League history. Um, unfortunately, his partner doesn't get into the team for me. Um, I've gone with Javi, yeah, see, I told you it's going to be controversy. I've gone with Xavi and Zenedine Zidane. You couldn't have a Champions League eleven without Zizou. Just what an absolute baller this man was. Um, and and mixed with the you know the lunatic fringe, the eyes, everything. He just he was just outrageous. You know that goal in the final in Hamden was like just so it was like something off FIFA. You know, um, I don't even think he could repeat it on FIFA. It was that good. So I've gone with Andrea Pirlo as my six and Xavi. Uh, Xavi Hernandez and Zinedine Zidane as my eights. Great show. Interesting though. Um, interesting that you mentioned two of the best midfielders in Champions League history and yet you broke them up. Yeah. Two of the best. Yeah, I listen. Interesting. Mark, what, what did you did you go 4 3 3 as well, Mark? Or what way did you? Oh, go? I've gone 4 4 2. 4 4 with, 2. Uh, one hold and one attack. And I always do that. Yeah. Just, Here we go. Hey. Four or so. um, in the number six role, just in front of the back four, I was kind of chopping and changing. Um, but I've gone for Xavi. It was between him and Zaydorf. And I was trying to get Zaydorf in there, obviously, winning the three times. Um, but yeah, like Darren was saying about Xavi, just unbelievable. Okay. Uh, on either side, I've, see, the two up top, I really love watching. So I had to put these two lads in midfield. On one side, I have one Cristiano Ronaldo. And on the other, I have one Lionel Messi. And then, just in front of the front two, I have Zinedine Zidane. Ooh, it's nice though, isn't it? <laughs> Interesting. It's nice though. I did it's say, like Darren, 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 when I was talking to you today, what did I say? Someone will put Ronaldo in midfield, proper midfield, wouldn't they? I have to. I have to. It was like getting the cheat code on LMA manager doing this team. You just, there were so many names to choose from, you know? Yeah, you wouldn't get away with it in fantasy football though, somehow. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> not on that budget. <laughs> no, definitely not. But no, yeah, so I've gone for Ronaldo, uh, Xavi, Zidane, and Messi. Great shouts. Interesting. I went with a three in midfield, so I went with Zidane, 
Iniesta and Xavi. I couldn't break up the Barcelona parent. Nothing could make me break up the Barcelona parent. I just couldn't. So I went with. So we all went with we all went with Xavi and Zidane. Yeah. It's unanimous, isn't it? Absolutely. So that's what that's what I went. I just I could, as much as I looked at it, I couldn't break up that Barcelona pairing. I just couldn't couldn't find a way to do it. So now it's going to get interesting when we get the front lines out. <laughs> Darren, your front line. Yeah, so three up top. Um, two, two of two of the three are I have obviously Marcus mentioned him in his midfield, you know. Um left hand side, Cristiano Ronaldo, right hand side, Lionel Messi. I don't think we need to say anything else about the two boys. They're they're literally Mr. and Mr. Champions League, you know, Champions just League royalty. Champions League royalty. You know, if we rename the competition, it could be the Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo Cup. It was that it's been that good for so many years. Um, and the two boys, they are wide of my central striker. Just thought this guy was different gravy altogether, I have to say. Um Raul, just an absolute footballer, just quality, you know, wasn't flashy, wasn't out, you know, drinking with the boys. He was nice and quiet, like to read a scorer. book and then but just came scorer. alive in that 18-yard box. And a, know? Nice, and a nice little nastiness to him as well on the court. Yeah, he had a, had a dirty yeah. little stamp in him and yeah. stuff like that and, you know, pull someone's left testicle and try and wrap it around their arsehole. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I wholeheartedly agree with it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Mark, this is going to be interesting. I'm very interested to hear your front line. Yeah, so um, the first striker is the man Darren just mentioned, Raul. You have to have him in there. Anytime you see former La Liga players get interviewed and they ask who's the toughest opponent you've gone up against in terms of a striker, they always name Raul. Um, just... Remember, it was a Tekka. Remember the purple Tekka jersey? I, I think I got one over in there, Tom Lane, at one stage, yeah. but it was just unbelievable. Yeah. And the, the different type of goals he scored as well. The purple, um, purple and, with the white, wasn't it? Purple with the white embroidery. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. And uh, beside him, I've gone for Alessandro Del Piero. What a man. What an absolute man he was. And not only that, like, remember Juventus went through all that crap, got relegated, he stuck by the club. Broke Shamrock Rovers' hearts in that game um, at Tala Stadium and all, but he's just an unbelievable professional, great goal scorer. And um, he he was never one kind of, you didn't hear much about him off the pitch either. So um, we've gone for Raul and Del Piero top. Interesting. Nice. Nice. Very attacking midfield and front line. Very nice. Um, well, safe to say, Darren, we matched up nicely up front because I also went for Messi. Raul and Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, and the only thing I toyed with was could I potentially change Raul out for Kareem Benzema? That's the only thing I was contemplating, but I didn't. I left Raul in there. I don't think I could have made a case to take it, you made it. You made it, made a good uh, decision there. An, no? an educated decision. Yeah. We have we have choices in life. You made a good choice there, so well done. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about the benches then. Who's on the bench? Uh, Darren, give us a give us your bench. Right, my bench. Um, Gigi Buffon. Love watching him over the years. Really, really love watching him. Obviously, being a goalkeeper and stuff like that. He's been involved in so many great campaigns um, for Juve, and and then obviously as as Mark said. You know, the whole thing with being relegated, but he stuck around and he got them back to where he wanted them to be and winning trophies again. And I think, you know, there's a lot of honour and dignity in that. Uh, again, a guy that's led his life the right way, still looks in tip-top shape at, mm. at 40 now, you know, and still playing amazingly well for Parma in Serie A. Really, really is. Went back to where it all began for him. Um, he's joined by um, David Beckham. Had to, had to try and had to try and get had to try and get L L uh, golden balls in there. Um Andreas and Yester. Um Alessandro Nesta. Uh Roy Keane. Jesus. Featured in a number of your combined elevens now. What's going on here? Are you back balls again? No, I certainly not. Uh Thierry Henry. Yeah, good show. Um and a little one from left field. 
because I don't necessarily think he was the best footballer in the world, but I absolutely think he was one of the top poachers in world football at one stage, and that's one Filippo Inzaghi. Oh, yeah, what a player. Good show. What a player. Fall she wrote, pal. Mark, Mark, give us your bench. Uh, yeah, blame me keeper already. I uh, went for Schmeichel on the bench. Um, with two defenders. The first is Roberto Carlos. Um, obviously, with Maldini in there, he, he can only get onto the bench. I have Carlos Puyol. Like I said, I was tossing the turn between him and Stan, but uh, Stan got my seal of approval. Zaydorf, another one I mentioned earlier on, he's on it as well. I've actually gone for uh, Luis Figo on the bench as well. Uh, he was an unbelievable player. I I probably watched him more when he was playing with Barcelona. Obviously, when he went to, to Madrid, the players he had around him. Um, Remember the debut with the pig's heads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Like, Proper shit housery. Judas. Like, yeah. But, like, listen, I loved watching Barcelona back in the day. The likes of, you know, Stoichkov and Hadji and stuff like that. Figo kind of came into that Barcelona team at the at the end of their era. But um, I've gone for Benzema as well. And uh, I've gone for another midfielder. Uh, I just said I'd get him in there to, to put a smile on, on Niall's face, and that's Stevie G. Okay. Let, let's face it. Like, no, but he, he, listen, he turned that final on his head, didn't he, in uh, Istanbul. So I just said, as a little thing for yourself, I just said I'd throw him in there for you. Thanks very much. A lot of back going on on this podcast these days, isn't there? Pandering. Pandering. Yeah. I'll I drop me... Sa- Sorry, just before you go on, when Mark was talking about a few things there, a couple of things came across my mind um, about watching, you know, certain teams over the years. And two players just jogged through my mind there and I went, not one of us have named either of these guys. Yeah? Now, I'm sure Noel's going to tell me, oh, no, 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 they're on my bench, are right. But, Ronaldinho. No. Not on my bench. What a footballer. Yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. man. And, and is the other one Brazilian as well? Because I was thinking of him. Rivaldo. Rivaldo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronaldinho and Rivaldo didn't even make it into the squads, man. Think yeah. of how good those squads are. Uh, but then two boys didn't even get a look in. Do you remember that, that goal? scary shit. Do you remember the one the goal, against Chelsea? Ronaldinho scored against Chelsea, yeah. I was oh, waiting on it. Oh, oh, brings a little tingle down the back of my spine. Yeah. It does. Ooh, it's red panties tonight, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. My bench. Uh, I went with Manuel Neuer as my sub goalkeeper. I had Sergio Ramos in there again, as I said earlier. I couldn't pick really, you know, it was a, a toss up really between the two. Alessandro Nesta, I had in there. Kind of looked at his kind of like little partnerships at times and stuff like that. Lads who have played together and really worked well. I thought Nesta and Maldini were outstanding as a partnership. Um, I put in Kareem Benzema in there, as I said earlier. It was it was kind of it was it was a tough one, but two quality players, and I went with Raul. And the player that I included on my bench from midfield, I thought was Paul Scholes. I put Scholes in there as my midfielder. So there you go. Good man, Noel. And it wasn't. And would it wasn't. you go on? Would you have put Karim Benzema in there in the actual starting eleven had he not tried to blackmail one of his teammates with sex tapes? No, I would have been more inclined to put him in there out of admiration. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <I'm only messing. laughs> no, nah. no, I don't think I did. Just so, I didn't just so everybody in. knows what goes on in the background of this podcast. No, I what? factored. <laughs> I factored in the fact that he was so influential in the in the three in a row. Yeah. Um, and that's what yeah. I put him in there for. And, and I thought as well, for him to stand out in a team like that, with so many stars, you've Cruz, Modric, Ronaldo, all these different players, Gareth Bale, Gareth so Bale, many yeah. brilliant players, Sergio Ramos, so many brilliant players. And for him to stand out as well, I thought it was amazing. And I, I think it's, I think as a goal scoring machine, he's unbelievable. Um, and join us next week on the Upper Tier when we're going to be reviewing those sex tapes. Go ahead. <laughs> Do we get an honourable mention for Loris Carius? Yes. We don't yes. get any honourable mention for Loris Carius. Not at Ooh. all. 
<laughs> I wasn't even overly impressed with Stevie G being mentioned on Mark's bench. <laughs> so Listen, Mark I had to put so I had to put I had to yeah. just appease it, you know, I put one in there. You um, did it. Give, give yeah, me uh, give give me your feedback to your United fans. So Paul Scholes on my bench, decent show. Ah yeah, decent. I just think, you know, the company that he's in with there, you Pirlo, Xavi, Zidane, Iniesta, Kane. There's a lot in there, isn't there? It's a nicely, doesn't he? He does, but how many midfielders can you have and can you play like this? Is the problem, do you know what I mean? I've only got three subs. Can't change the whole midfield. Like. Decisions have to be made, and as much of a cunt as Kane is, and might I remind you, he's a fucking humongous cunt. Um, he's an unbelievable footballer, and I think every team needs one of them just to help drive them on a little bit. I kind of feel at times that United at the minute we're missing that, we're missing yeah. somebody really, really nasty in there, and a, a guy who you know just as quickly slap his teammates in the head as 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 the opposition. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just think that as good a player as you are, you have to make it to the final, don't you? Just saying. That's nice, isn't it? Jesus. What for? <laughs> he knew he could send Nicky Bo out there to do a job in that midfield, you know, against the mighty Bayern. Like, why bark when you have a dog? What's the point here? I don't get it, you know? And we had Jonathan Green <laughs> yeah, for yeah, cover, just in case. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did. You know, we had Keno and Scalzi both banned for the final, and we still rock up and, you know, kick the nutsack out. And we, come on, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Only for that last, that last, what, eight, nine minutes? <laughs> Mainly. Um, 90 seconds? Yeah. If 90 seconds wins it for you, a fair play. That's that's who that's, are we? It was 90 who seconds. are we? The question who are we between the, the 92nd and the 94th minute? That's when it all went off, man. Mm. That was just mayhem, absolute mayhem, mm. absolutely. Don't remind me, fuck you all if I can. That's why you're not on my team. <laughs> <laughs> that's why well, you're on my team. Well, lads, it's been a pleasure putting together these combined 11s. We will be back next week with another one where we're going to do the current campaign combined 11, which should uh, throw up some interesting uh, choices because a lot of players this campaign haven't performed. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm going to give everyone a quick little insight into my team for next week. Eh? You ready? Yeah. I've got Sebastian Haller playing up front as number nine. But don't tell anyone. Interesting. Little Easter egg there for everyone. <laughs> there you go, see? Look at that. Little teaser. Come back and listen for the rest next week now. Well, if you want to let us know your combined 11s, you can drop them into the comments. You can also email us the upper tier podcast at gmail.com, Facebook and Instagram, the upper tier. And we will definitely be clipping this and putting it out. Where are we going to put them, Darren? TikTok, 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 baby. Here's a question for you. Did everyone else do this in math class? And they were yeah, supposed to yeah. be like, you know, the back. just sit there doing their, doing their little combined 11s and the best yeah. teams in the world. And then you'd hand it to your mate across the little thing and he'd cross out someone and stick someone else in and you'd be like, you swine, don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Just it's, it's, it's great. The, the, the problem, oh, the problem these days, these Those days, the days, these days is the reversal. These days now with coaches and managers, it's too much maths and not enough football on the page going on. Too much maths. Yeah. Till next week, my friends. It's been a pleasure. Cheers, Absolutely. lads.